So, I'm assuming nobody heard what I said. Uh, I have been working with these materials during my PhD at RIT. These are called squarings. I made the first uh, all small molecule solar cell during my time there. And this is called third generation technology in that it hasn't been commercialized yet. It's still in the R&D stage. It shares, however, some characteristics with the stuff that's currently out there in that it's, called, it's a panchromatic absorber. So panchromatic absorber means that it can absorb uh, ultraviolet light, it can absorb visible light, and it can absorb near infrared and infrared. This is why places like Germany and England, which are not considered tropical paradises covered in sunshine, are able to really efficiently utilize solar power to revolutionize their economies. And I'm here today to tell you that Rochester can, should, and will do the exact same thing. The reason for this is because we have fundamentally changed our planet with the emission of fossil fuels. We've perturbed something that naturally occurs that's called the greenhouse effect. So, solar radiation hits the Earth in the form of light waves, the UV, visible, and near infrared that I mentioned already. And most of the radiation is absorbed by the Earth, warming it up, making it a nice place for everyone to live. Some of that radiation is uh, reflected back out uh, in the form of near infrared waves. And some of it is trapped by our atmosphere, which allows us to have a nice livable temperature of, of the air that we're breathing and interacting in. When we put emissions into the atmosphere, like CO2 and methane, and uh, these are done by burning fossil fuels, we are changing the composition of the atmosphere, which then traps more infrared radiation, warming up our planet. So, as we turn up the dial on our emissions, we are also turning up the dial on the temperature of our planet. This is problematic. Uh, global warming is causing extreme weather events and floods and I want that graph to stay there for a minute so you guys can see this. Uh, what you're seeing here is the correlation between the two things. So for the last 2,000 years, we've had a fairly steady rate of CO2. We haven't really been emitting a lot. With the industrial age and then the post-World War II boom, we have exponentially increased our emission of CO2 into the atmosphere, which has resulted in a similar increase in our temperature. Unfortunately, despite being aware of this since the 1970s, we have done nothing. And in the last 10 years, we've actually increased our emissions. So we're now increasing at a rate of 2.2% per year, and you can see that on the right-hand side of this graph. This graph was just released by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change in their annual report. This was a pretty big deal for climate scientists, environmental activists, uh, people who live on this planet generally. And what we know now is that we have to change the way that we consume and generate energy and, and power our economies. So is the fossil fuel industry going to help us with this? Well, no. Uh, this is a quote from Rex Tillerson, the CEO of ExxonMobil. What good is it to save the planet if humanity suffers? So the cognitive dissonance there kind of <laughs> boggles the mind. Uh, he doesn't seem to realize that we actually live on the planet. And uh, by saving it, what we're talking about is keeping it livable for us, for our children, our grandchildren, and for all of the other species that are present on this planet. So how are we going to do this? Well. There's a lot going on right now in order to get a global carbon emission reduction treaty signed, and this is really important work. But concurrent with that work, we need to switch from a fossil fuel-based economy to a renewable energy economy. And my baby's solar power, so that's what I'm going to be talking to you about. Uh, in 2002, so these projections were prepared by Bloomberg and the International Energy Agency, uh, the solar energy market will grow one gigawatt per year by 2010. The market means the demand. So people are going to want solar, but it's going to be at kind of a slow rate. This is the projection. It was exceeded by 17 times. And then last year, it was exceeded by 39 times. And then this year, it's going to be exceeded by 55 times. 
What we call this is exponential growth. So what you're seeing here is world photovoltaic module production as a function of time. And we are now in a, a, a point in time where not only is solar being mass produced, it's also being mass implemented all over the world. So this is by country. There's the US, uh, Germany, Japan, Taiwan, China. China has outstripped the rest of the world. And this is not just in manufacture, this is also in installation. They are currently one of the global drivers for this technology. So why are we suddenly using this technology a lot more? Well, the cost of solar has dropped precipitously as the quality of the product has increased. So as I said, we now make panchromatic absorbers, which means that solar can be used not just along the equatorial band, but all throughout the world. Uh, it's used in Greenland. It's used in Germany. It's used in England. It's going to be used here in Rochester. We here in this city have a long tradition of manufacturing and R&D success. Our economy has been built on that. And if we would like to continue in that vein, it's not going to be an incredibly difficult transition. This is good news. I'm here to tell you that we've already started. Uh, but what we need to do now is increase the community awareness of what's already happening and garner further community support. So what do, what do we do? <laughs> There's three simple steps. I'm an engineer, right? So everything is broken down into numerical lists that I can easily process. So, <laughs> not actually a joke, guys, but that's okay. <laughs> so not only does our city have a tradition of manufacturing and R&D, we have a history of revolution and of shifting paradigms and of making the world a fundamentally better place by the actions of the people who have lived here. So I'm saying that that's what we're gonna be doing now with solar, all right? We are going to be the test model, the test city for how this can occur. So, so far, we've already signed the US Mayor's Climate Protection Agreement. This is actually a really good agreement for us to sign. Additionally, our community is a member of the Clean Communities Initiative. This is a nationwide program that is focused on alternative transportation and alternative energies. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to call on our mayor to examine the, the climate action plan that has already been proposed and implemented and put on the website uh, for the city of Rochester and find out exactly how she wants to move ahead in the tradition of our forefathers and foremothers here in Rochester. And if we designate a local solar coordinator, that's somebody that can actually pull all of the plan together. Um, but not only do we need the politicians, that's not going to get that much done. Uh, we, also need, <laughs> we also need investment by Rochester and New York State. And I say, I say financial and temporal. Because this isn't just about money. This is about people that are willing to put together their time to actually come together and collaborate to support the businesses and universities that are already working together to promote this technology and promote its implementation right here. So who are those? High Tech Rochester is a business incubator that focuses a lot of resources and energy on developing amazing new technologies for both wind, solar, and energy storage. Sustainable Energy Development is another local company that is having its installation business of solar panels absolutely explode. Harbeck Plastics is, uh, a, is a model for how all small to medium sized businesses can operate. Bob Bechtold has gotten his facility carbon neutral, despite the fact that they are an injection molding plastics manufacturing plant. This is fantastic news, and this is happening right here right now in Rochester. Uh, we have a brand new solar fabrication line opening up. Uh, it's called Solar Rochester. It's over in the old Eastman Business Park. And what they're doing is they're acting as one of the flagship facilities for the US Photovoltaics Manufacturing Consortium. 
So they are manufacturing, testing, and troubleshooting solar panels for companies all across the United States and the world. Right here. We are making solar. Eastman Business Park. <laughs> Instead of having one monolithic company that can single-handedly destroy our city's economy, we are filling this with many, many small businesses. And these small businesses are able to work together and they're able to collaborate and they're able to get new technology out of the door and commercialize much, much quicker and much more efficiently. And finally, two major universities in the area, RIT, which is of course my alma mater, and the University of Rochester. Both of these are working towards technology development, but they're also working towards implementation of the technology that already exists. So RIT is putting in a fairly decent sized solar farm on its property. Uh, U of R is working to get students actually educating other students about global warming and climate change. So in order to have this all come together, we're essentially needing to balance the politics against the business, right? Because this is unfortunately how the sausage gets made. When, when we are able to do this, what we need to next have is public support. We need to have people like you guys here in this room that are willing to stand up and be cheerleaders for this city and talk about how great it is and talk about what we have already accomplished both in the areas of climate change action as well as solar power technology development and implementation. So, three things. Political will, business need. We want to create jobs, right? We want good jobs. We want to create skilled manufacturing positions so people can feed their families and uh, only work 40 to 45 hours a week. And finally, we need public support and demand. We need people saying, why don't we have solar on that building? Why isn't City Hall powered by solar? Why don't we have solar at any of our transportation hubs? And if somebody says to you, <laughs> Rochester can't use solar, we don't get any sun. Explain to them that the sun puts out a lot of different kinds of photons, not all of which you can see, but all of which our solar technology can collect, okay? Once we have these three components, what we're going to do is become one of the Department of Energy's solar cities. So these are flagship cities that by developing and getting a plan approved by the DOE, they actually get investment, not just financial investment, but time investment and resource investment and personnel investment to help the city implement the solar plan that it actually builds. So this is my idea for the plan. Between the second to, to fourth year, those seven businesses and universities go to carbon neutral and solar powered. Is this going to be challenging? Yes. Is it doable? Yes. The fifth to seventh year, identify target neighborhoods in Rochester. And these should be neighborhoods that are all over the city and help them go from the grid approach to a decentralized solar system on their house. Not only will this show that the technology can be easily implemented and used, it will also help families get out of energy poverty. Finally, this is the ambitious kind of end of my plan here. Uh, by the end of 10 years, every single city within the Rochester city limits can be solar powered. We can put solar on every house in the city. This technology has decreased immensely in price and increased in quality. This is something that we can do. And not only can we do it, we should. So I'm in the middle there. Uh, looking like a nerd in a lab coat, because that's kind of how I roll. And this is me at the People's Climate March in New York City on September 21st, where 400,000 people gathered together to march in the streets and demand change and demand action from our leaders. This was an enormous sense of community. The scientists were marching with the faith leaders. And at first that felt kind of weird. But then, we all realized, wow, if we can march together on this issue, that's pretty much two of the most uh, diametrically, or we're portrayed as diametrically opposed the most often.
Converting to a renewable energy economy here in Rochester is just as doable as getting 400,000 people to march through Manhattan. This is something that if we can pull together as a community and work towards, will revolutionize our economy, our environment, and our, our ability to pull in and maintain the amazing people that make this city so great. Thank you very much. Yeah.